Hey guys, great to see you, Joe here. Welcome to another lesson. So there you heard my rendition of Never Going Back Again by Fleetwood Mac, and it's a really nice number. This for anybody who's into the kind of finger picking thing, it's it's one of those songs that's really nice to be able to play. So first things first, the song is in drop D tuning, which just means we take this thicker string, the sixth string, the top string here, and we tune it down a whole tone to a D. So it should sound the same as our fourth string, yeah, because that's a D as well. <laughs> Alright, so they sound the same. Then you put a capo on the 4th fret. That's how they recorded the song. So if you're looking to kind of maybe play it like they did, then you need to pop a capo on the 4th fret. And then check your tuning, because sometimes when you put a capo on it can throw it out a little bit. So let's zoom on in and let me start explaining to you what's happening in this song. The easiest way of doing this is to kind of take a look at the shapes to start with. And... I'm going to break it down into sections, five sections, okay? And so let's just talk about a few of the things which are happening first of all. The song, generally speaking, with the right hand, there's a lot of Travis picking going on. And that's just a fancy way of saying six, four, five, four in the bass. Six, four, five, four. Okay, so that's what Travis picking is. And that features heavily in this song. So I would say 90% of the song has this Travis picking happening throughout the song. There is one other instance where it becomes 5-4 in the bass. Now another thing which you may need to practice for this one is the um, E, B, G, E, B, G, E, B, G. There is a lot of that kind of figure within the song now if you've watched any of my finger picking lessons you'll know that you place your ring finger on the E string like so okay the middle finger on the B and the index on the G now, that's a good kind of uh, discipline and a good way to play that figure and if you need to anchor your fingers then just use your thumb on the bass string or something so there's a lot of this So, you know, if that isn't something that you're already comfortable with, then it just may be worth your while spending some time just doing that exercise for a while because it certainly won't do any harm. Okay, now, looking at the first chord, what we have is our index finger on the second fret and all the chords that I mention will be in relation to the capo. So this will be the first fret and the second fret, third and so on. So the first chord, we place our index finger fretting the bottom four strings of the second fret, then our middle finger plays the second string of the third fret, and our ring finger plays that fourth string. We have like a D there, yeah? Now, what's happening here, like I say, is we've got this Travis picking, like so, and the middle and the ring finger are hammering on to those strings it doesn't change they just stay on the second and the fourth strings so they hammer on and they pull off so it's like the reverse first time around it's a hammer on second time it's a pull off so when we put this kind of bass down we have Now you can already hear this um, E, B, G. Okay, so the first part is... Now when we play the 4 in the bass, so we play the 6 by itself, then we play... Effectively we're playing the 2nd, 3rd and 4th strings for the 2nd note, so we've got... Then we play the 5 in the bass, then we take these off and go... Okay, so we got back to the bass, all right? Then the little pinky comes on this fifth fret, first string, and that's where we introduce this kind of EBG. So we've got a 
Then we kind of do the reverse of that, okay? So we pull off instead of hammer on. And we go to that figure, which is just the pinky and the ring finger on the fifth fret, second and fourth strings. Okay, so back into the D. And that's the first part. Then we go to this chord, and this is where the bass switches to 5-4. Okay, so all we're doing here is we're staying on the second fret, only we're just barring the bottom three this time, because that's all we need to do. And then the pinky and the ring finger are on the fifth fret, second and fourth strings. Okay, so we have this kind of... Okay, so when we hit the five in the bass, we hit the first string as well. So that starts off. So we've got. Okay, that's what you're looking to do, nice and smooth. So you can see in the bass, we're just doing 5-4. And just, yeah. Then we play. So all we're doing is we're taking that little figure there and we're sliding it up two frets. Back again and back into the D. And that's a lot of the first section there. So there's actually quite a lot of information to take in there, yeah? So we've got. All right. Now at this stage, we move up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frets, and we bar bottom four strings again. Now, what you need to know in this section is, it moves between kind of, I suppose it's three figures, uh, two figures in fact, okay? So the first figure is this one. So we've got on the seventh fret, like we've said, and then on the 10th, this is in relation to the capo, our pinky is playing the bottom two strings, okay? So that is shape one, and shape two is the pinky coming off, and these two fingers play eighth fret, second string, ninth fret, first string, okay? So we, we switch between that shape and that shape for this. That's all that's happening whilst we have our Travis picking, which we've returned to in the bass. And it, let me just play it so you can kind of hear what's happening. Okay, so that's all that's happening. So first time we hit the bass, and we hit the fourth and the first and the second. A in the bass. Then we have that figure, which I've said. So we got. We go back to the pinky figure and we play. Now, the second time, rather than going. It goes okay so rather than playing the those both together it plays second time it's kind of difficult to hear if you're not listening out for it okay so let, let me illustrate that and show you first time around it's third time it, it's together okay so then we come down here to a B minor okay so we're looking for a fifth string and a little pinch on the second and third 
Then we go to this chord where we're playing the second fret, all the strings apart from the sixth, and the ring finger goes up onto the sixth of the fourth fret, and we play. Okay, so for sixth string, second and third again, back to the B minor. Okay, so there we're pinching the second and the fifth, and then playing the third and fourth. This kind of idea. And then a long A. And then we kind of hammer that on again to the end. So let me play that for you. Don't forget the little hammer on at the end. One more time. We're back around again. Okay. So, it's important that you kind of perhaps break it down into just the basics. I've broken it down into five parts, so let me play each of those parts for you slowly, and then you can see what's happening. Okay, so we have figure one. Okay, one more time. Figure two. Figure three, we switch from Travis pick into five four in the bass. Back to the D. I'm gonna play that one again because that's one of the trickier sections. section four okay and figure five And so they're all the sections, yeah? So my suggestion would be to just play all the sections very, very slowly. And essentially, guys, that's it. You know, there's not a whole lot that I can say about this one. It's, um, it's not the easiest piece, I would say that. And so I would definitely suggest that you've already had some finger-picking experience. Else this really would perhaps be too much of a challenge. Although, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So, you know, there's always a way of doing these things. But... I'm a great proponent of people kind of tackling things that are within their range, you know. I mean, we should always reach for something a little bit higher, but we don't want to kind of reach for something miles above the standard at which we're at because that can have a kind of negative effect and slow us down somewhat. So, you know, I do hope that there's something that you'll be able to take from this because it really is a nice number to be able to play. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop those down below. I'll do my best to uh, answer those. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you soon.